That's it. Perfect. And it's recording. And you are good to roll. Okay. Thank you. Now I can get Thanks, have a, Yeah. Have a great thank meeting, you. everyone. Right. Thank you, Angela. Okay. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March twenty. A March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Board of Health is being conducted via remote participation. A roll call to check and make sure everyone, um, uh, committee members and staff's video and audio is working. Okay, so roll call. Jen Brown. I'm here. Tim Radner. Here. John Tobiasen. Here. Maureen Millay. Here. Stephen George. Oh, we didn't hear you. I didn't hear you, Steve. Oops, we're not hearing you, Steve. I can hear you, yeah, slightly. Slightly, we can't really yeah. hear you. I just Yeah, you're very mute. This down. Here we go. Now you can hear me. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. 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 Listening to the top of your head. Okay. Yes. Nancy Gilbert. Okay. I'm going to call the um, meeting to order. And first thing on our business is the minutes of August 12th. I have to go back and get those. Uh, no. Does anyone have any comments on those? Great job, Steve. Yeah, lots of talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I can't find my now. Man, 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 man. man. Jennifer. No. I had one question, just where it said, um, I can't find my minutes now, oh, Lord. but it was the last part where the Board of Health, um, shoot, I'm so sorry. I just had them here and they disappeared. Um, And it was just that uh, that I think what we we said was that the that we can't pass an ordinance. So what the Board of Health it was in that closing comment that the Board of Health um, we felt that we couldn't pass a regulation, but that if there was going to be an ordinance or a bylaw, it had to come from the town council. Um, that's not true. We can pass a regulation. No, I said, but we weren't passing a regulation at that point. But if it was going to be an ordinance or a bylaw, that had to come from the town council. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, do you know what I? Yeah. I don't remember us talking about that or not. I have to say. I just had them here, and now I've lost them Let's see i think it's the last after it's the, the last very last paragraph. sentence there and huh, i just lost them all wait a minute that's the agenda oh. you get nancy a few screens and you can have everything in front of you i can't do that <laughs> I, I just can't do that it's the only way to work <laughs> Is about is it the last bullet point on the reasons not to do, not to act? The proposed that it will be difficult or impossible to enforce, etc. Yeah, about the regulations and if there was going to be an ordinance or a bylaw, the town we would support the town council in doing that. I I just sixty one Main Street. Wait a minute. Where is this? Agenda. I keep it getting agenda. The board's consensus was that a large social gatherings can indeed be a serious problem in the COVID era, but an order or bylaw on gathering size oh. is not the most effective way to address the issue. But, oh, but I the, see. What we were saying is that a board of health regulation. 
regulation is not the uh, not the most effective way. Right, and that if there was an ordinance or a bylaw by the town council, we would support that. But that for us to do the regulation, oh man, I I, just, I see the point. That's a, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wait a minute. Here we go. Agenda. Ah, here they are. <sighs> I printed everything and accidentally left the folder at home. Okay, so the board's consensus that uh, large social gatherings can indeed be a serious problem in the COVID-19 era, but a regulation by the Board of Health um, is not the most effective way to address the issue at this time, and that the board would support a ordinance or a bylaw by the town council ah. and i don't remember talking about it that way but I don't, okay no. but I don't one thing that i don't think I we discussed that, that. Well. i didn't i no. don't i no. don't remember that discussion at all all right no. but i also do remember <laughs> that one piece that didn't get in that if we if we limited it to 20 people right now some properties would be too small to host 20 and would be giving them permission to host 20 and some properties. Do you remember that? No, that I, do I remember. think you had that somewhere else. <laughs> I don't remember. No, that. I do remember that because I, I gave an example of my yard. I think I could get right. like 10 people in this section of my yard, maybe. Or eight. Yeah. And yeah. that was a pretty big section of my yard. And I thought, um, you know, for a lot of those downtown front or backyards that 10 people is way, way too many by a factor of two or so. Right. And um, I said that if we limited it to, say, a property on Phillips, where there are lots of parties, and if we limited it to 20, there'd be far too many people than the eight, uh, one person per 8,000 square feet. But no. the state, wouldn't the state law still apply though? I mean, we're, we're assuming all these ordinances and so on are going to be followed. Let's assume the state law is going to be followed. The, then the, those places will be limited by the state law, which is yeah, eight by state law, eight, right. eight per 1,000. I don't right. understand your reasoning, Nancy. I mean, that would, the eight per 1,000 applies to any number. So if you don't. Yep. Right. No, have, my point. My although point. it does say something about like a limited area, I guess like a big park or a beach, then those numbers are different, you know, that it's harder to have a boundary on some of those things. But I think a, a, a yard or a house or a my porch or whatever has boundaries. Um, my point back then was that the properties on Phillips, if we passed a regulation that limited it to 20, that would be far too many people on the property. But the so state what? law. The state I law. mean, <laughs> All right, never mind. I still don't yeah. understand what you're saying. Yeah. I, mean, I think we decided just to follow the state's guidance yeah. and use, yeah. yes. and use okay. that yeah. entity. Okay. Exactly. Um, because, in part, because of things like that, because in some cases, 10 is too many, and in other, you know, it. it and that, yeah. that's what I wanted to get. A, I don't know if the minutes reflected that, that sometimes 10 is too many. Uh, never mind. Never It did come up. But never mind. <laughs> okay. So I, okay. Just. Did, it, should we be saying that somewhere? Because I think that was the consensus that that we should abide by the guidance provided. We we say that we say the statewide maximum size of gatherings is not fifty in all cases, but rather eight people. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Right. So that's what we, we, we kind of landed on. Okay. 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 Um, All right. Does someone want to make a, a motion to accept the minutes? I'll move we accept the minutes from our August uh, 13th meeting. Second? I can second it. Tim? All in favor? John? Um, favorite, aye. Maureen? Aye. Steve? Aye. Tim? Aye. Nancy? Aye.
Okay. All right. Thank you. So old business, 61 Main Street. And do you want to just give it a little information? Uh, Jennifer and Susan is here. Zoom. I hope. So what is yeah, Susan's yeah. here. Okay. Susan, are you are mm -hmm. you've been unmuted your microphone? Are you able to talk? Yes. I, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Susan. Why are we doing old business first? Is don't we do old business first versus new business? I'm just reading the agenda. It started the next item is new is <laughs> there's no business. I, I'm not, Whatever. I just read the agenda. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Isn't 61 Main Street next? Oh, wait a minute. It is old business. Oh, that's it. I'm looking back to January of 2019. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm just reading the agenda where the next item is new yeah. business. And, new and business. I don't care, but I'm just mentioning. <laughs> we, should go the, we should follow the agenda. I apologize. I was following an old template. I may have mixed that up. And Nancy and I were trying to get this organized. So I apologize if that's my no error. That's no. okay. Doesn't matter. Yeah, thank you. All right. So I, oh, I, I can't find it. So what's next? Jeez, uh, I can't find the agenda. Now I have like three agendas. Um, new business. Okay, town discussion of uh, prohibiting smoking in the workplace and public spaces. And I put that on because those are two, were last redone in 2010. And now that we redid our smoking regs for selling tobacco, I thought we should go and look at our other two related regulations. And these are 10 years old. Well, I read through them and it does seem like some of the definitions are different in the fact that it addresses, like it says no smoking in smoking bars. <laughs> yes. um, maybe it would be helpful to have them work better together. I didn't think, see other substantial changes than that. You know, Guilford contacted Jen asking about uh, regulations and we have to look at parks, playgrounds, and uh, other areas. They're, it's not very clear in them. Um, let me look. It does mention them. They it are mentions the them, but I think we need to review them and revise them and bring them up to date and also put in uh, electronic devices. Right. It's so it's not that we're doing it tonight. I just wanted to yeah, figure yeah. out that yeah. we need to work on it. Yeah. And yeah. how should we proceed working on it from here? I sent an email to Cheryl Sabara asking her um, if there's any new templates coming out. I've looked through several other towns. They're using these. If you look in Newton and Brookline, of course they have very large health departments and they have these documents that go on and on and they have all of this in this overall regulation that also includes a million other things. So we need to just figure out what we want to do from here. Comments? I mean, it makes sense to update it for it doesn't have a definition of public places despite that being in the title. It's kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has lists. <laughs> lists? There's a list of where those public places are. Yes. At the end. I mean, at the very end. Yeah, that's not. And it's sense. sort of really not clear. It says in addition to prohibition and it has. A through J, 
town-owned athletic fields, town-owned playgrounds and swimming pools. It doesn't say parks, like it doesn't say Groff Park or Mill River. Um, and, smoking. and it doesn't include electronic devices. Yeah, that's a big omission. Yeah. So how would you like to proceed with this? I know Steve provided us with a, I mean, a nice uh, editable version of this, right? right. <laughs> ah, now I understand. I guess I wouldn't mind taking a stab at making some revisions and then passing them back to people for comments. You know, I, I, I don't know if Nancy, if you have information about templates from other, if you, from Cheryl. I haven't other, found it. I'll try calling other, Cheryl. Other towns. I, uh, I would volunteer to help out to um, provide some updates so that it's consistent with um, state language, electronic devices, and um, take a stab at the, um, the uh, pu outdoor public spaces. Thank you. And, and um, I, I've done some work with uh, seminars, attended some seminars with Cheryl, and I could perhaps get an update on what are some of the current issues other towns are looking at. And, we could, and just to, to give you kind of a menu of what is being looked at locally. And you could um, have that in advance of a meeting to, so you'd have a basis of something uh, to, to look over. Thank you, Susan. That sounds like a great place to start. So Susan, do you want to work with Maureen on getting us some draft materials? Yeah. Um, um, update. Now, did you talk to Guilford? Why was Guilford interested in this information? I, I think it was, it began with a request to use the space. I, I vaguely remember it, it beginning with that and he was asking if there were any local regulations prohibiting smoking in public space. And there is just one brief reference in local uh, Amherst Board of Health regulation. Right. Um, so uh, I, I, I think actually, it might have been sufficient for his purpose to use just that one reference, but. Um, well, ironically, I put this on the agenda before he contacted us. So oh. I felt that it was needed anyhow, because it's 10 years old. And I know that I just was signing up for a webinar um, uh, on the on state tobacco regulations. It's an update. Um, when I worked in um, the Berkshires, and this was five years ago and more, I, I was, um, you know, the Lee Board of Health at Tritown was very involved in tobacco and we did tobacco and compliance inspections and so forth. So I'm, I'm happy to revisit it and take, take a look. Okay, and well, see what thank you, offer. Susan. That Great. Would be very helpful. And thank you, Maureen. Mm -hmm. Maureen, I will, um, I will email with you and and talk about how we would maybe get started with this and get okay. some, some materials to work from. That'd be great. Okay. okay. God, now I've lost it again. <laughs> I, honest to goodness, whenever I discovered I got up here without the um, without my agenda, so. Emergency condemnation. Emergency for, condemnation uh, for 11 Le um, Phillips, and I drove by it, I walked by it. 
So I'll give you an update and just hi to everybody. I'm Jen Brown. It's nice to, to yes. see you all. I'm the yeah. acting, hi, acting director. Yes, nice to see you. So I spoke to Ed Smith today and he said that they heard from the landlord. They're all set for now. Um, he does not need to bring this in front of the Board of Health. Um, I believe there's some deadlines next Friday. They expect to get an update from him tomorrow. So nothing to do today on that. Okay, that's Thank nice. Thank you. And now we have 61 Main Street. That's Susan again with the unresolved water filtration. Okay, so I checked in with John Thompson and John's recommendation was, as it has been in the past, um, September tends to be the rainy season and he would like to see uh, what that property looks like after some heavy rains because he is not completely confident that the infiltration has been resolved. He'd like to see what it looks like after some heavy rains. Um, also, just so you're aware, uh, the we have been getting fairly regular pest management reports over the past 12 months, with the exception of March, which was that whole yeah. beginning COVID issue. So that's not to be too unexpected, but um, the cockroach population has been held at zero, according to the reports. Um, there, uh, when I did an inspection of the basement uh, about a week ago, there were mouse droppings, significant mouse droppings in a storage area that I'm going to ask them to focus some attention on. So we, we want to, and in sort of summary, we want to say that while the cockroach problem seems to be under control, um, there's still issues with uh, pests in terms of mice, and we are not absolutely certain that the water infiltration has been resolved. I'm just bringing it back to you because that property at 61 Main Street which was at one time used as a restaurant, um, has remained vacant all this time. And I'm anticipating Mr. Tang or his uh, representatives have occasionally asked uh, if they can start to get a tenant again. So I'm anticipating that request and wanna make sure that um, Julie was a strong opponent of any food establishments going into that address. So I just wanted to bring it back to the board's attention of where we are at with the situation. And that's so this, it. Susan, this, this is the, um, so this is the space next to Lone Wolf? Correct. On, on the ground level, it's got apartments above, the, it's one building, right? 61, 63? Correct. Yeah. Two residential yeah. units above and yeah. Lone and what used to be Himalayan Friends. Yeah, and the same owner, it's, st it's still the uh, same owner and, and, we had, and the infiltration issue, I remember our discussions about that. So you're just bringing it to our attention that you, this needs looking into. Yes, um, okay. that, that um, I think that uh, John Thompson and I should send you an update uh, maybe for the October meeting and just keep you abreast so that if we get to a point where John can say confidently the water infiltration is resolved, then it could come back to the board to whether or not you want to consider the property open to a food establishment or if you want to continue to prohibit a food establishment. So we want to make sure you have all of the uh, information before making that decision. So it was, it was an open-ended prohibition of, of a food establishment until conditions were met? Is that kind of the where it sits? Yes, yes. But, you know, if, you, if we go back to the beginning, when I came to the um, 
Amherst uh, Inspection Services in 2016, and I did an inspection and found some problems there. I, I found a letter dating back to 2015 from John Thompson asking um, Mr. Tang, the owner, to resolve some structural problems there. So mm -hmm. this is a long-term unresolved issue that I, I guess I, I just, you know, just don't want to, at this point, don't want to let it go. We may be close <laughs> to resolving it, and I just want to make sure uh, it doesn't get lost. Yeah. As far as you know, is the lone wolf situation okay? Itself? It, seem, it seems to be, but um, I have to keep asking the owner. And I have a good relationship with Rob Watson and his yeah. uh, overall, his inspections have been good, but I am prodding him to, because he gets, uh, his, he contracts separately for his pest management. And I have not had his reports for quite a while. And I've said, you, you need to let me have the last six months of reports. Mm -hmm. So I will try to have all of that for you in October as well. Okay. I would and where were the mouse droppings? Were they in the Himalayan side, 61 or 63? So at one point they were in the Himalayan side and I haven't been back there for a little while, but they were in the lone wolf side of the basement, there is a, um, a rear uh, storage area, closeted area. So the mouse droppings right now seem to be just in that area. Um, the Himalayan side, 61? No, it's, it's the, it's the well, lone wolf side. I have, not been able, I have not been able to get back to the Himalayan side. So it was bad, it was in Approved, but I don't have recent information, so I will try to get more recent information uh, by the October meeting. Thank you. Does anyone else have questions for Susan? If the conditions stayed the same, could a non-food establishment go in number 61? Yes, I, I think there would not be a problem with a non-food establishment. We're just wary about introducing another food source. Sure, yep. Yeah. Any other questions? So a quick question. Um, I don't know the background of it, but uh, looks like the objection started with this water problem, right? Is that the water problem or the pest problem? Or are we discussing they were both? <laughs> They were intertwined. So by ha by creating uh, a water source, it encouraged the um, the cockroach problem specifically, and it was an infestation. It was um, a very dramatic problem, and it, there were dramatic solutions. And it was cut back and cut down and vastly improved. But it took it took a couple of years to get to that point. Um, the mouse droppings, I think, um, uh, the mice problem, I think, uh, was uh, exacerbated when Himalayan friends uh, vacated the premises, but food and things were left behind and no one was addressing uh, uh, the cleanup until I went in and it's been almost a year since I, I went in there and discovered it and then over a few months later that was greatly improved. So one of my concerns is um, without uh, close uh, um, uh, supervision on this property, it's, it seems that uh, it can be easily neglected. Okay, and that's sort of been the history of it, correct? Yes, I agree. Yeah, Julie was pretty adamant not to have another restaurant on the Himalayan side. It would just exacerbate the problems that are somewhat controlled. Any other questions for Susan? Thank you very much, Susan. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, now we have to appoint Jennifer, who's the acting health director as an agent of the Board of Health. So may I have a motion for that? I'll move, we appoint Jennifer Brown as uh, agent of the Board of Health. Second? second. I'll second. All right. Okay, all in favor, let's see. Tim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Maureen. Aye. John. Aye. Nancy, aye. Congratulations and thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> thank you. They always, they always tell us, you know, we have police power, so now you have the police power. <laughs> <laughs> Be responsible and respectful. You can go <laughs> hand out masks. From, masks from, <laughs> the times we're not wearing masks. Right. Uh, yeah. There weren't any topics because Jennifer is going to talk about COVID. So I'm going to pass it on to Jennifer for the director's report. All righty. Well, I do have, it looks like I have four things. Uh, the first thing is, um, you may know this, but I just checked to the tobacco regulations that are going out will be going out, but through the inspections department. So I spoke to Rob Mora and he says he's taking care of that and he has the new tobacco regs. Um, so just to confirm that's through that um, department. That's the while you're on the tobacco regs, Jed, while you're on the tobacco regs, um, the, I see on the website there's um, a version of them, but it's not the signed version and it's also not uh, texted. It's just a PDF, it's a picture. Um, could we put a proper uh, version on the website that has the signatures and uh, has a searchable text PDF, which I can create. Yes, but I'll I do would... that. So, so I'm the right person to do that. So I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't have the sign. Do I have the signed? I'll get it from you. Yeah, Nancy oh, Schroeder from... has it. Nancy Schroeder. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Nancy has it. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you, you can't, it's really, I think, important to put a, a text for you know have the PDF created through character recognition not just um, by a picture because otherwise yeah. it's not searchable I don't know if you can do that it's there's various ways to do it you know I can do that and it was okay. just an okay. error I had both ready yeah. to load and then I check everything afterwards I was like why is that so blurry it's like oh I uploaded the wrong thing but then no I should have okay. I should have changed it so yeah, yeah no problem okay good no thank you I'll do yep. that um, the second thing I wanted to do was just go over the COVID concerns line. Um, you may know about this. I don't know if you spoke about it, but it is the um, line that the town's developed. It's 259-2425, or you can email COVID concerns at Amherst Mass. It started August 30th, and um, I just kudos to them. I think it was a really great idea and organization. And since that time, they've had 95 calls. I checked today. Um, and the calls come in, they're anonymous. And that's great that people feel that there's a place that they can say something if they don't want to give their name. And they can give their name also. That's also perfect. So it goes to this one line and the three community participant officers take those, uh, those concerns or questions and then they get to, um, <clears throat> sent to the appropriate person to respond. So it goes to inspections or the health department or the ambassadors, which I'll talk about, or to the police. So I just looked very briefly at what the concerns were and they are, as you would think, um, people have uh, uh, talk, called in about mass questions, gatherings, and then a lot of questions about testing. So that's been a great success, I feel. Um, so that's another one point. Any questions about that before I move on? Seems good. So, um, so, just oh. a quick question uh, related yeah. to that. So you, uh, you said that you categorized the responses into four. What was the major one? Uh, it is all, are all the questions about mass or? Gathering, sir. You know, I looked at the list very briefly, and I really wanted to go through it so I could give you the range. And um, I just don't know if I can answer that. Um, I know I did see masks frequently. That came up, but I just don't know what else was there. So, 
So that's not a good answer for you. No. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about, and you probably know about this as well, is the ambassador program that was started. I believe we're a week into it. So that's the program. Um, I think it's the, the police chief and Kat Newman was hired from the town. Um, they've hired people. They're still hiring people, um, but it's up and running. And it's been a program, I think it's really based with leading with education and promoting, you know, distancing and wearing masks. Um, so far, or wait, I'm not sure about so far, but what I've heard is over the weekend, there were 127 interactions. Um, if I'm getting that number correctly, that's what I wrote down. They've handed out paper masks to folks. And also if you're a UMass student, they have uh, UMass cloth masks. So it sounds like it's been um, also a success. I'm happy to see that um, and hear these good things about that. And that'll continue and just uh, with more people coming. And uh, you know, they're going into um, the downtown area and the neighborhoods, you know. Do you know what hours they might, they are working? I, I don't know. I don't know if it ends at 9 p.m. if I heard that. Uh -huh. I don't know if it goes later than that, so. And then just the last thing I'm gonna talk about um, is just, you know, personally, you know, I'm starting, you know, interacting with some of these meetings and um, uh, with different, different folks. But one meeting I sat in on today was the fall reopening working group with UMass and the town. Mm -hmm. And really what I took away from it was like this really positive experience. I think the way that the town and these UMass folks and it's different people from UMass, you know, talking about what's going on, it sounds really, again, I wanna say positive, you know, hearing about what they're doing um, I think that they have knock and talk and they're giving out bags to people, to students. Um, but, you know, each weekend, you know, we're getting more information and learning more and uh, figuring out which way we should go. So those are the things I just wanted to touch upon. Uh, Jen, were you aware of the like, newspaper reports about a very large number of large parties with, where the police visited, uh, at least on the pretext of noise, yeah. although I'm sure they were con the concern was really more about the size of the gathering. It, it seemed like that was no no better than a normal Labor Day weekend for all the remonstration with the students. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I can comment directly on that. You know, I just, um, I did hear that this was, you know, relatively, you know, a good, good weekend. And then there were these reports. Um, so, you know, they'll just, you know, take them as they come. Um, and I don't know, you know, much else I can really say about that. If there's anything you'd like me to follow up on, I surely can and get you, you know, specific information. Yeah, you know, I think after a few weeks, it might be interesting to get from the police some statistics on uh, comparing, say, 19, 2019 to 2020, number of calls, you know, just, it used to report, it'd be in a police report. I'm always was astounded, you know, you, Amherst Police responded to this, 150 something yeah. this weekend. I mean, it's big numbers. I'm just curious. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see the comparison from last year to this year. Yeah, I know that's a great idea. And you know, I hear from them that these they're really taking down inform you know information and getting numbers and stats so they can see trends. So, yeah. I would assume that kind of data is routinely collected yeah. and reported by the police department. Um, yeah. For what they do, and, and in terms of deep deep decreased overall numbers, you might think there'd be less, but in COVID there should be less. It's hard to probably separate those two factors. But. Yeah, yeah. They handed out, you know, you know, many, many citations. They were collecting, if the money is paid, $9,000 worth of fines, according to the newspaper, for the mm. noise violations. Yeah. There, were, there were 30, but there were several to one party. Yeah. I don't know if people are then calling more frequently now on on parties. Um, I've walked up through Lincoln mm -hmm. Avenue and Phillips and down University Drive. And what I see on a day to day, we, we, we only came up to New Hampshire on Monday. I didn't hear anything um, 
over the weekend. Uh, there was something on McClure Friday night, but it didn't seem too wild. And um, I saw other, and I counted, the uh, corner of Fearing and Lincoln, there were eight boys. There was another McClure and we walked by and there were four people and two people drove up in a, in a car and they got out and they said, oh, okay, there's four, there's two more, there's six, that's it, that's all we can have here today. So I, I'm seeing good things. And on University Drive, I've seen the students wearing masks, but I saw a faculty member <laughs> running without a mask. Yeah, I was um, just going to say, it's not just and, university, it's all of the residents. Right, and, oh, yeah, and yeah. I see a lot of students running and they have their masks down here and then they pull them up when they see you coming. So I've seen pretty good things and we I've even walked through town once and it, it looked pretty good. I was really surprisingly impressed yeah good. and i always say thank you for wearing mask and they say thank you for wearing a mask and they also on lincoln avenue because there isn't the parking because the students aren't there which we were afraid was going to happen people cross the road because oh. As nancy, froze. Nancy's. <laughs> nancy you froze yeah. oh there you are okay Oh, I froze? Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, I know some of the phone calls I field are residents, you know, town, you know, yeah. permanent residents and, and, you know, students really asking what's the limits? What can we do? We want to make sure we do this right. So I commend them. Yeah. It would be nice to find out from the police exactly. And I saw that a Pelham Road home was visited multiple times so they might they i think a lot got several tickets oh so at least that's what i got from the newspaper article i read because mm -hmm. it, it also made the boston globe oh <laughs> so what went to the boston globe i'm sorry I didn't get that one the parties the 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 30 the citations Pelham. made the boston globe Oh, 30 citations, citations. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, one, one thing is um, when police list it, you know, they usually list it as noise complaints, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, noise complaints doesn't uh, really mean crowding, right? So is it, uh, is it correct? Correct. Okay. So we have to actually tease out those two things, you know, because sometimes people are only two people sitting there with a very big, huge noise and <laughs> calling that's a good point so yeah yeah good point and i also wonder because i i have a friend in a grantwood neighborhood and i know she counts cars and she takes pictures so i often wonder if people are calling in advance with a little bit um because they're over of the concern and i'm not saying that there there probably are problems but You know, I have one more thing to share. Is that okay? Yes, go right ahead. Okay. So on the Amherst webpage, not the town webpage, but each morning uh, or Monday through Friday, I'm the person that logs in and puts in the number of current cases and the running total. Mm -hmm. So if there's ever any you feel want some modification or have thoughts about that webpage, you know, you can let me know. Um, so, I'm sorry, Jen, which, red, which web page, well, not the town? I'm going to hold it up. I don't know if that's really going to, can you, does, no, you can't see no. that. Oh, that was such it's, a good idea. It's what? the health department one, correct? Yeah, the and, health department. And the town of Amherst. Hold it, Paige. Yes. Oh, I think oh. it, I'm very impressed with what oh, you okay. keep up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's me. That's the first thing I try to do in the morning. I go on to MAVEN, you know, the Massachusetts Virtual Epidemiological Network, and see what our uh, current, current people, residents in isolation, and uh, then get the, the running total. So um, our positivity rate is point something, correct? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think I looked is it, yesterday. Is it the Amherst, the Amherst COVID-19? Yeah. It, yeah. So AmherstCOVID19.org, that page, or? 
Go into the health department. Okay, amherstmass.gov and go to health. Health. Okay. And then you can see the COVID concerns with the pink phone. To the right is the novel okay, coronavirus. Just, yeah. So before I do that, when I opened up the town page, at the very top, there's a big COVID-19 cases, and then there's a link, COVID-19. Oh, okay. So the big, the banner yeah. is um, uh, IT um, has, has organized that. And I communicate, we communicate back and forth, so it's coordinated, but so not that page. Not that page. Yeah, that so, has great, great services so, there. Yeah. So I'm but, under health, do I click on COVID concerns or novel, which, which thing do I click novel on? Novel coronavirus, COVID-19. So it says the latest yeah, coronavirus the latest. disease, yep. September 10th. Mm -hmm. And then you can go down 745. I grabbed those numbers and put them on. Mm -hmm. so. so anyhow, those are uploaded by, by me. So. What does the word current mean under current cases? Uh, daily. The current? Mean, people in isolation. Oh, I'm sorry, in isolation, yes. So, I'm so general question that, about- Would that be cases identified in the last, within the last 14 days? I'm just trying to- is that what what makes a number go away from that nine when, when they end isolation which is 14 when, days no that's quarantine so this does not reflect quarantine this is only confirmed laboratory confirmed cases that are in isolation so that's a good so question. current current means in isolation okay yes. There's just so many um, numbers out there and things people are doing, you know, running oh, okay. seven day average, 14 day average, isolation. You know, there's so many metrics that I always love to see the max, the, the definitions really clear. Yeah, 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 got it. I agree. Run, and running total is all that have been confirmed. Since that positive. first case in March, correct, yeah. Mm. Um, Jen, I'd like to ask a question about the MAVEN, um, how the data gets in there. So let's say that a student, um, lives in town to go to university, let's say, um, but their permanent residence is somewhere else. And let's say that they get tested somewhere else and, and you know, they give their home address. So what I'm asking is, do we know that the MAVEN data for the town of Amherst really reflects how many people who actually are here who are getting sick? Yeah, so that's a good question. And it's, it's pretty, they're pretty good. They, I know the university and the college, they've dealt with these kind of situations prior. Um, so when, when a case is reported, it does go to the, town, the resident, I mean, where the person lives, their home residence. But, you know, it also goes to, um, you know, if the person says, well, you know, I'm living here. Um, so it gets divided that way. And if there's any discrepancy, it's an email, a click away, or a phone call away. I'm communicating with every other town in Massachusetts. So it's really very up to date. I think we've had just a, a few, you know, um, questions about uh, resident status uh, concerning students. Now, there were some other things that were labels that were mismarked that should have, 14 that should have been in Sutton, but they were taken off within a few hours kind of thing. Now, Ann Becker from UMass said that everyone who's tested at UMass gets in the 01003 zip code. So, so UMass, so all students that get tested at UMass come in to the Amherst zip, that zip code. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. I was, I was, no matter where they live. And, yeah, and I, I, I heard concern. her say, too, that they asked them where are they actually living right now, you know, in terms of like getting that address so they know if it's a on campus versus in town. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I know it's a hard thing to do with students. I mean, it, they move a lot and they, yeah. yeah. You know, and then when we, we talk to people, we always confirm where they are. Yeah. yeah. And, and many of the students who are living in Amherst who go to UMass, even in remote classes, they are required to do like a weekly testing. That's what I heard. Not, not if they're remote. No, not if they're in remote. If they're all remote, they are not even known to the UMass authorities. Is what my understanding was. Only if they're taking well, at least one on-campus class. So I, 
well uh, i i heard you know that uh, students who are taking remote but who are living in amos sent an email to be tested week that's is my I, children were that, yeah my children were asked to do that <laughs> that i um, i listened to the that um panel yeah. discussion last week and it yes. seemed like they were testing uh students who are not going to campus but are living if they have an, an in-town address they are being right. requested to come in for testing want, week if week. Like, i can read you an email we got at 1205 today from jeff hescock and ann becker went to the campus community if you want or i can send yeah. it but it, okay, what does it say i yeah, read it uh, it says dear campus community supporting the health and safety of our community is the most central part of the university's response to the coronavirus pandemic coronavirus we're writing today to update you let me see uh it's about the asymptomatic, asymptomatic testing program for COVID-19 conducted at the public health promotion center at the Mullen center blah 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 um we've updated let's see some of the testing protocols for students students who reside on campus are required to be tested twice a week in addition off-campus students coming to campus for face-to-face -face classes research labs or work are also required to be tested twice a week Right. Undergraduate students who live in the Amherst area and are not coming to campus for classes are strongly encouraged to get twisted, tested twice a week. We ask that you take us up on this offer for free testing. Graduate students who live in the Amherst area and are not coming to campus for classes are strongly encouraged to get tested weekly. These students also have the option to be tested twice a week. So I didn't realize about the options there. That's new to me. I knew what was required. And the Amherst area is defined as Amherst, Hadley, Sunderland, Belchertown, Pelham, Shutesbury, and Leverett. Faculty who are teaching or conducting research on campus are required to be tested weekly. I get tested weekly. Clinical faculty who are working in healthcare facilities uh, at, or university health services staff are tested twice weekly. Staff who regularly work on campus are required to be tested uh, weekly. So that's the sort of status of, of that. Yeah, thanks, good. Yeah, um, I got my fourth in a row negative test result this afternoon from yesterday <laughs> morning's <laughs> test. <laughs> Uh, from uh, MIT. You like it when you get the email and not a phone call. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'm just, you know, every day I look and it's nice to see a couple thousand more negatives or results and no positives. That's, always, that's a great day. So. Yeah, I think I, I saw an email from the university where they've tested since they started over 20,000 and there was like 14 positive or something? Uh, I just read yeah. as of last night, uh, 29,000 tests, 13 positives. And that goes, that's cumulative positive and that's uh, goes way back. Yeah. It's August 7th, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I, I read about good. testing um, wastewater, John. Did that seem, John and Tim, those seem right up your alley. What have you heard about that? Uh, let's see, one of my colleagues sent me a plot today of some data, <laughs> but I can't share it. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, doing, um, and she's a co-PI on a, I signed off on a $5 million grant proposal yesterday for the same kind of work wow. to, to NIH. Um, um, and it's with colleagues in other places and all that. Um, yeah, it works. I mean, you're seeing the South Hadley thing. That it, mm -hmm. you, you can see positive cases in sewage. There's enough, you can see enough gene copies. So we're actually measuring, she's ex, we're actually making measurements in the three inflowing sewers to the wastewater treatment plant, which uh, there's three, the way the wastewater enters is three sewers. One mainly is UMass, one is mainly South Amherst, and one's mainly North Amherst. Mm -hmm. So they're being measured plus certain uh, sub sewer sheds within the campus to look for look for uh look for evidence um so we'll see what what yeah. comes of it yeah um i think everybody's scrambling what to do with the data what to do there's, there's an example that gets publicity from arizona i think arizona state and they started it when i was on that webinar about schools opening and he's a former um dph person and he's now advising the University of Arizona. You can go back to uh, data were collected in France and in, in Paris, a couple, a couple of places starting in January and, it, and the, the sewage data tracks deaths 
cases, you know, whatever, all tracks really well. Um, and the idea is that that Arizona, you, if you can see a signal, you might pay attention to a particular block or building or something. And in this case, I think it was Arizona, it was a, a dorm and there were two asymptomatic positive cases identified otherwise. Now, it seems like the testing UMass is doing of everybody should cover that kind of ground, but it's a good combination. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what's going on? I don't, you know, beyond telling you that, I don't PCR tests and um, with the South Hadley is participating with this company, uh, Betabot or Bot Beta, Betabot, I think it is. And I assume they're, they're doing things, startup grants, venture capital, they want to go bigger, you know, they're doing, I doubt South Hadley's paying for this. I, mm -hmm. I can't imagine they are. <laughs> I know we have somebody running around to several municipalities in Amherst. I only know this because I'm paying, I'm signing off on travel reimbursement, but <laughs> so silly mundane things one does, but um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm encouraged by both the town and Jennifer. I think it's, I think our town's doing great reporting. I think our state does great reporting. Um, I, it was great to see something last week of the governor's, you know, putting efforts on those communities where we're, you know, we just haven't been able to drop below 200 to 400 cases a day, you know, a few deaths, but emphasis on Lawrence, Chelsea, Revere, Lynn, yeah. you know, yeah. that yeah. makes sense yeah. to target. It does make sense. Yeah, I yeah. agree. A lot of transmission in those towns, consistent, not just, you know, spotty. They need support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's great that, um, you know, I, so I think our state's doing pretty good. Yeah. In terms of work and effort. And stuff. Um, I just had a, one or two questions just as follow-ups. Have we heard it from anyone with concerns about masks in the village centers that came up last month? Uh, Maureen, I don't know. I'm sorry. No, you haven't yeah. heard anything. Yeah, I, that's, I don't know if there have been. Yeah. Concerns. yeah, so, but you haven't heard anything. Yeah. Um, and the other question I had is about flu shots this fall. Mm. And mm. what is the department thinking about any kind of flu clinics or outdoor flu clinics? Or I don't know, is there thinking about it in maybe in a different way? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I'm not quite sure we have all the answers. I know it's obviously on everyone's radar. And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about it. Um, you know, one thing is it's going to be required for students K through 12. Um, a lot of the um, practitioners in town, I believe, are going to be doing their own flu clinics. So mm -hmm. I spoke to someone that, that said, oh, yeah, they're all getting fired up to do outdoor, um, you know, drive through clinics for the students. So that's a great population to get that flu shot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from, from me as the public health nurse, we get vaccine from the state um, and it's earmarked for um, adults who are uninsured or mm -hmm. underinsured. So one thing I've done every year and I'll continue to do is um, offer it to people that you know, fit those categories. I go restaurant to restaurant and vaccinate people. I've gone up to the survival center. I'll have to figure out how to do that with them. Um, community meals. Um, I used to, or I still do work closely like with the Center of New Americans. It was wonderful. They used to be in the building. Now everything's virtual, so I'm not quite sure how we'll do that, but I'll open that up, make sure people get shots. You know, otherwise, um, there's so many places to get flu vaccine. I hope everyone really does get it this year. You know, for the same reasons they should always get it, but now with COVID, obviously for their health, you know, for preventing the spread of flu, um, but also just to make sure that um, we don't overtax the system, um, you know, the healthcare system. So it's going to be something for NPs and doctors to really think about. If someone has these symptoms, well, I really have to differentiate between, you know, the fl flu and COVID. So there's got to be probably maybe drive-through flu testing sites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. <laughs> it is interesting, yeah. So a um, couple of questions. Uh, this is for Jennifer. 
um, you have this uh, data you get every day, right? Do you map it out in Excel or anything? It would be interesting for us to just to see, you know, uh, what's happening on a weekly yeah. basis or something. If you yeah, have it, I think I would love to. Oh yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because I felt very proud of myself. I made an Excel spreadsheet and I did a pivot table. So I put, a, you know, demographics in it. And that was a while ago, I haven't done that. You know, I do look at the Hampshire County um, and take a look at that. But as we get more cases, that is something that maybe I can do. Um, you know, one thing I, I think about is I want to be really careful, you know, with HIPAA, obvious, obviously we all want that. But um, so that's something on my mind to balance those two things. Not on the website, I'm just saying for the board itself, we would love to, I mean, at least I like to see, you know, some data for sure. our own town, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another one is, uh, is it possible to just to, because education is a very powerful uh, instrument for, for flu, you know, encouraging people to, so maybe have some sort of education material right on our site, you know, uh, for flu, you know, vaccination. Yeah, you know, I, I did put something up um, like three days ago about flu. So it, it was there, it doesn't have a pretty little photograph icon yet. Um, oh. I need to put that up, but I agree with you. I agree with you, and I'll I'll definitely get do that. Mm. That's good. I tend to look at the weekly uh, the weekly report from the Mass Public Health that breaks it down by every city and stuff. That's interesting yeah. to look at those pot rates and all that data. Yeah, pretty good. It is. I mean, that's the kind of impressive thing I think that's there. I think. Do you I know, think so. um, it's sort of, what's the word from uh, Amherst College, Hampshire uh, College in terms of data? I haven't heard anything said about those two places and they have more, relatively more students on campus. Oh yeah. So um, Hampshire College is um, contracts with UMass. So I don't know how, if there was a case or if there had, if how that would be reported. You don't but, know what they're um, doing for testing? Do you know? I so just with, know? They're contracted with UMass, so I. Okay. Yeah, but right. I, to what extent? I, you know, I know I, I say that because the public health nurses cover um, Hampshire College. Right. Yes. So yeah. The New York um, Times has a, a part of their site that tracks colleges, and it showed um, Amherst College is reporting three positive test results. Yeah, and they have a nice dashboard on their web page. Um, right. Those college is reporting? Okay. Yes, yeah. and I've been working with them, um, and they've been great to work with. Um, very, very organized and uh, responsive. Really good relationship. I go back and forth with them. So, up to date with them. It does, does Hampshire also coordinate with UMass or are they doing their own thing? Who? Hampshire. Hampshire does do UMass. Amherst does not. I, I don't think yes. Amherst does, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Amherst has, just like UMass, they have a separate link with the Broad Institute. Right. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, try, I'm looking at the Hampshire College website and they don't make it. Quick, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Jennifer does have a little piece up on your flu uh, season 2021. Exactly. So there is a little piece, Tim, on the health, uh, health department page. On but I agree, it, bring it more front and center. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like Hampshire's doing weekly testing, group A, group B. Mm, yeah. No, bi-weekly. They're testing every two weeks, Tuesdays. Reported today, total tests completed 301. They've had zero positives and I don't know, they're testing half the people every week, it looks like. So mm. I think the governor, I was listening, you know, I wasn't doing anything else. I listened to the governor's report the other day, maybe yesterday, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and he said that the that they are going to start reporting on the colleges on their on the state dashboard sometime soon. Mm -hmm. I had heard that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nancy, um, I see that George Ryan has um, his hand up. Is that? Let's see. Wait a minute. Yeah, we usually. Up. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, George. Thank you. <laughs> Did you want to have a question, George? Uh, yes, um, just not a question actually, but just an observation that may or may not be useful to Jennifer Brown um, mm. for uh, reaching out to the people who don't have access to a flu vaccine. Um, there's the Wednesday morning breakfast. She may know this already, but um, at the Universal Universalist Church in the center of town, we, yeah. get, we get about 50 people on average right now. So um, I don't know if that's a site that you would consider and whether it would be appropriate, but I, I, it crossed my mind when you mentioned the Survival Center, um, yep. that that's a place that a number of people gather on a pretty regular basis, uh, Wednesday mornings from about eight till about 10. And yeah, th thank you, George. I have gone there in the past. Good. Yeah, no, but I appreciate hearing these places. Oh, and then um, also someone said um, some of the mobile food uh, markets, I, I'll, see if there's a place for me. Um, I, uh, Counselor um, uh, Pat DeAngelis has good connections with the mobile food marts. And um, if you're looking for a, uh, someone who could get you in touch with people there, well, that's someone that could be helpful. Pat DeAngelis, okay. Thank Pat you. DeAngelis, it would be uh, uh, DeAngelisP at um, amherstma.gov. Um, so, or you can just reach out to me and I'll get you in touch with her. But she's got good connections with the Mobile Mart community um, if you wanted to reach out to them. Okay, thank you. And I also know that one of our um, CPOs, the community participant officers, was doing some outreach with them. But I appreciate They're great. That. No, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? What, when will flu shots be available, you think? They're available now. I've got mine. Oh, oh did yeah. you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Where did you get Steve? Uh, stop and shop. Stop and shop. I got it in CVS. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So say which aisle? No. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going to get a second one. They said, you know, I talked to my. I was in my, my annual wellness visit. So it's probably a good idea for people that are, you know, at risk and older people. Uh, it, it's probably not covered, but it's worth paying for, you know, long about December, because if you get it early, it, it tends to wear off by this or by the early spring months. Right. Good point. I want to also appreciate Jennifer for reaching out to those who cannot afford. <laughs> so nice what? of you to do that. <laughs> what, what did you say? No, the flu, I, I was saying um, the, you are serving the people who cannot afford the flu shot, you know, reaching oh. out to them. It's just such a nice thing to do. Yeah, thank you. I, I think it is. I, you know, I really feel, you know, the, 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 the compassionate thing. And I, I do want to yeah. say that Julie Fetterman started that. So kudos to her. <laughs> now, um, any other questions? Nancy Schroeder mailed the card to Julie, mm -hmm. and she greatly appreciated. I brought the gift card over to her the day after. I also made some food and brought it over, and she was most appreciative. She didn't expect the gift card. She thought we were more than generous, and she wanted to convey how much she loved working with all of us and how touched she was by the two things. So, Thank you. any other questions before we adjourn, Stephen? October, October 9th, is that it? Yes. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. October 1st is a Thursday, so I guess it would be October 8th, rather, 8th. Second Thursday, October 8th. Yeah, oh, October um, 8th. I'm curious, since if Susan's still there, Jennifer. Um, yep, I have uh, it in already. Hi, hi, horse, Down, restaurant, downtown, whatever. Oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know I, about that. Did they I ever resurface? It has not resurfaced in any way. Okay. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not so, that's what I thought. But. <laughs> for anybody, but uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they had a lot of work to do. <laughs> Indeed. We have, um, so it's October 8th and then November 12th. Mm -hmm. yep. So we know. Good. And you want to just make sure December 10th. Okay. Any other comments before we close? I have a motion to close the meeting. Anyone want to make a motion to close? I'll move we adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> okay. I'll second that. Second. Okay. Tim? Aye. Steve? Aye. Maureen? Aye. John? Aye. Nancy, aye. Thank you very much, Jennifer, Susan, right. George. Thank you, George. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you all. All right. Thank, thank you. Good night. Good night. Well. Bye. 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 So long. Thanks, Jen. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Susan. I'll talk with you later. <laughs> <laughs>